All right, hello everyone, it's Arlington Matrix here. Today we're gonna to be taking a quick look at an application of rotation matrices, uh, basically applying it to a real system to solve a real world problem. Uh, in this example, we're going to be using rotation matrices, which I've derived in a previous video and are intended to be applied as a rotation matrix multiplied by a vector, which would be a column vector. Note that rotation matrix R multiplied by vector V is not equal to vector V, or V transpose, I suppose, multiplied by rotation matrix R. Uh, this is a simple matrix identity. Left multiplication is not equal to right multiplication. So when you're applying the rotation matrices, make sure that you're applying it in the correct direction. And uh, furthermore, we could solve this problem using quaternions as well. Uh, it would just be a matter of using the unit quaternions and the coordinate axes to apply the rotations. However, in this case, we're going to be using the rotation matrices. So let's get started. All right, so here's the problem statement. Feel free to pause the video to copy this down. We're given that uh, we have some kind of excavator here. So I've drawn a little picture of an excavator. Uh, we have a top view and a side view given. So the current orientation of this excavator gives points O, A, B, and P. Point O is this origin. This is the center of rotation of the cab. Point A is where we have the arm basically linking to this, uh, to this cab. Uh, point B is another link along that arm, and then point P is where the bucket is attached to right at the end here. So we can kind of visualize how this would move. This uh, this top, top bucket piece would move around or would rotate, and then we would have a rotation at A going up or down. We have a rotation at B moving the bucket up or down. And uh, what we're given is from this current orientation, O, A, B, and P, we have a target point T. We want to move the bucket to this target point. And we're asked, first of all, whether it's possible for the bucket to reach the target. Is the, is the arm even long enough? And then B, if it is, what rotation would be needed at each joint? So we've defined these rotations in terms of uh, a theta about the z-axis and the origin. We have an alpha about the a-axis. And we have a beta about the b-axis. Note that these axes are not aligned. So each of these rotations is not being applied about the origin, but is being applied about the axis at this joint. In this case, we have an axis at B, which allows uh, a Y rotation to move point P. Now, it's important to know when we're, when we're solving a problem like this, that the order in which we apply these rotations matters. And so I'll include a little video here demonstrating that. So here we have a pen. We have a set of coordinate axes, x, y, and z. Z is coming up out of the page, right? So say we take this pen, we do a 90 degree rotation about x, and then we do a 90 degree rotation about the y. This pen is now pointing into the page after those two rotations. What if we change the order of rotation? We apply a 90 degree rotation about y, and then we apply a 90 degree rotation about x. The pen is now pointing down. And this is, uh, this is an example that highlights the importance of the order in which you apply the rotations. So there's no correct order specifically. It depends on the specific situation of your problem. But in this particular instance, an X rotation, oops, sorry, an X rotation followed by a Y rotation into the page, a Y rotation followed by an X rotation parallel to the Y axis. So we have this, uh, each of these links here, and we can see that the cab, if the cab rotates, it's gonna rotate every one of these local axes. So what we're gonna find is easiest is if we apply the rotation locally, and then we move up the chain to the most global rotation. In this case, the global rotation is the one about the z-axis, about the origin. So the first rotation is gonna be on link BP, and that's gonna be a local rotation in the y direction. Then we have link AB, which is going to be another local rotation in the Y direction. And then we have the rotation of point O, which affects all of these other, all of these other links. And point O is going to be a rotation about the Z axis. And hopefully, 
that will get us uh, pointed at our target in, a, in an orientation that is valid for this excavator. So first of all, we're going to take a look at whether or not the bucket can even reach the target. We, it's not worth uh, trying to solve for these angles if the bucket won't even reach the target point. So the way that we're going to just kind of check that this can reach the target point in the first place, we know that, uh, that based on our diagram here, we know that OA is, is a fixed link. So link OA here might as well be rigidly attached. And we know that this is all currently oriented in the X direction uh, based on these, based on these uh, direction indicators here. So we have this fully, fully pointed in the X direction and it needs to rotate to reach this given target point. First of all, we note that the only way we're going to get a component in the y direction is if we have a rotation about z because there's nothing to rotate about x these axes are all aligned uh, in this term in this case in, in the z direction in this case in the y direction so none of these are going to produce a y component unless it rotates in the z direction first so we might as well create a unit vector kind of simplify this down to a 2d problem and create a unit vector in the direction of t so unit vector so this is a unit vector in the direction of the target point. So given that our original OA vector in this two-dimensional plane is equal to 1, 0, which is already a unit vector, then this tells us that when the, when the excavator is pointing in the correct direction, we're going to have OA prime equals U. So effectively, we can say that OA prime equals in three dimensions, 2 over root 5 and negative 1 over root 5. And then in the z direction, that's 0 0.5. That's the z coordinate that was given in the problem. So this gives us an idea of how this is going to be oriented when the cab is pointing in the direction that we need to be pointing in. And then we can just consider the length of the arm, which is going to be the length of the length of AB plus the length of BP. So if we orient our target point relative to A, so target point relative to point A prime, which is the rotated A, T minus A prime. So that tells you from the front of the excavator to the point in space T, where the origin is somewhere back over here. So this will tell us this distance here. And if we calculate the length of this, we find that that's equal to, so this is equal to 2.5298. And in this case, it's unitless. But if we had units, we would put them there. So basically, all that we've done is we've taken the unit coordinate OA. We've broken it down into a two-dimensional problem, rotated it, brought it back up to three dimensions, and then computed the distance from point A on the front of the excavator to point T in space, and calculated the length of this. The length of this is important to know because basically all we're doing is we're just checking whether or not we have a long enough, uh, a long enough arm. So length of the arm, note that these are distances, uh, just as a side note, in case I have to explain it, when we do this, x, y, z, we're taking the length of this vector, which is a square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So this first part is just very quick, and I know I haven't really explained it all that well, but I don't feel that I should have to because this is really basic geometry for the most part. All we're doing is calculating the distance in, uh, in terms of the target point. We're calculating the distance to the target point. And in terms of the boom arm, we're calculating the maximum length of the boom arm and confirming that the boom arm is longer than the target point. So, so we've confirmed that the boom arm is longer than the distance to the target point. So this should be a valid point. And I'm going to underline should be. Uh, realistically, what we would do in the real world 
is we would determine whether or not the point is within a realizable space. So say we have this uh, two linkage here. So this is point P. Uh, based on this point A and how far it can rotate, we would say that point P has, maybe it can move into here, it can move into here, it can kind of go up, maybe go back a little bit. But there's a, a maximum logical space that uh, the boom arm can actually reach. That would be the realizable subspace. And we would check basically if our target point is within that realizable space. However, this is just uh, a very quick example. We don't have a realizable space for this system and generating one would be largely outside the scope of the problem. It's way more complicated than we need to make it. So we're gonna ignore that for now, but realize that a realizable subspace of all points that P can possibly equate to does exist and uh, may be also limited by physics as well. But uh, the in this case, we're just confirming the boom arm is longer than the distance to the target point, and we've confirmed that. So now, what angles do we need to get to reach the target point? So when we're applying these rotations, it's easiest to start with the rotation at point B and then move back up the arm. So point P, we know there's no rotation about P, but at point B, there's rotation of link BP. So we can apply that rotation first. Then at point A, there's a rotation. We can apply that rotation second. And then at point O, we apply that rotation at the very end. So if we look at this mathematically, let's look at the rotation matrices. So the rotation matrix about the y-axis. So given this rotation matrix about y, we can apply this at both point P, or sorry, point B, and at point A. We have this point B, which is going down to point A, or sorry, point P, which is where the bucket is. About point B, we're having a rotation beta such that our rotation matrix in terms of beta and the vector that we're rotating is going to be BP. So BP is going to be equal to vector OP minus vector OB, such that our rotated vector, we'll call it BP prime, is equal to R beta, our rotation about beta, times OP minus OB. And this gives us, when we translate this back, add OB, this gives us a transformed point P following the rotation at beta. Similarly, we're gonna, we're gonna call our new point after rotating by beta, we're gonna call that P prime, just P prime. So that's the new point, P prime. And I, I should really, this is something separate. This isn't part of, this is B P prime. But if we add this, we get P prime. So similarly, rotating about alpha, we have a rotation matrix alpha, which looks exactly the same as the beta rotation matrix, except we replace beta with alpha. And similarly, we're gonna be taking OP prime minus point OA, and we're gonna be rotating that by alpha. This will give us point P double prime. This is gonna be point P after it's been rotated by beta and after it's been rotated by alpha. So we need to then add plus OA to get us back to global coordinates. And then finally, we're gonna be doing that rotation theta about the origin. So this is our rotation matrix about theta that we're gonna be applying to the global system essentially. So if we wrap this all together, we're gonna have P double prime, so OP double prime, times rotation about theta. And we can then expand OP double prime, R theta. And again, we substitute in our P prime. And uh, truthfully, at the end of this, we would also have plus OO 
which is just zero. So this is the final rotation. If we apply any set of rotations for alpha, beta, and theta, then this equation will tell us exactly where the bucket point P is located. So all we have to do now, we'll call this uh, P lowercase t, we'll call it P sub t as the transformed P. So P t should be equal to our target point t, and that's all we have to do to solve this problem. Now that's easier said than done since this is a nonlinear equation that we have to solve. But if we solve this nonlinear equation, we'll, uh, we'll end up with a, a system of equations that looks something like this. So this is the system of nonlinear equations that we have to solve. And clearly, we need a numerical solver to solve this. So we won't be solving this by hand. I've written a small MATLAB script to solve this, uh, this exact problem. And uh, I'll just give the results here. And it's worth noting that these angles are relative to the start position. So these don't tell us whether or not maybe we, we bump up against any of the, uh, any of the physical limitations of the excavator, but this tells us what angles we need to rotate each joint by in order to reach the required point. So both the so the point is within a realizable range, and additionally, we can calculate these angles. For the most part, I wanted to emphasize in this the importance of the order in which you apply the rotations. Uh, as well as how you would go about solving this problem. It's not so much about getting the answer, it's about the process that you would go through in order to get that answer. So we started, just to emphasize this, we started with this problem statement. We realized that we need to apply the local rotation at B, then apply the local rotation at A, then apply the local rotation at O. We applied those in, those, in that exact order by creating a vector so a vector BP, a vector AB, or I guess AP, AP prime, a vector OP prime, and applying the rotations accordingly. So I understand that this particular problem is considerably more difficult than anything I've ever solved on this channel. And additionally, I realize that perhaps my explanation in this problem is a little bit lacking. So I'm expecting some questions to pop up in the comments section. Hopefully you made it through the video, but certainly if you want to test, if these, if you want to kind of reverse this problem, check if these angles are correct by going back and applying the rotation at each point, not just plugging it into this formula, but actually going back up and applying these rotations. And it's good practice and you should find that, uh, that these angles produce the required target point. I'm Arlington Matrix. Sorry for the remarkably confusing video. I did not think when I started this that it would be as confusing, but uh, unfortunately, while solving this problem and while producing this video, I have noted that uh, this is considerably more difficult than anything I've done on this channel before. So hopefully you were able to follow that. If not, Feel free to leave a comment below telling me what I did wrong or how I could make it better. And uh, have yourselves a great day. I'm Arlington Matrix, and goodbye.